Hello and welcome to a video on the DIY category L7E hybrid electric vehicle for three people. Car thing DIY to be built from uh, DIY craft and building supplies materials. <laughs> <laughs> With a um, minimum of, <coughs> excuse me, with a minimum of um, industrial um, uh, tools needed, uh, it's very specifically going to be built so that you can actually construct this in um, uh, in your house. So no dangerous power tools. Um, uh, modular design and components so that you can actually get it through the double doors um, out through the double doors of say a kitchen or a conservatory or you know whatever <clears throat> you know the sort of thing I mean where you can you know, you've got the um, uh, two, two, two standard um, PVC doors that lead out from you from your from your house, I think that's the that's the idea, and lightweight enough to be able to carry the parts that you construct, um, you know, out <laughs> um, and assemble them in a carport or um, a parking space or whatever it is. Um, so um, let's get to, let's get started. I, I can't find that out of the way. Now, um, <coughs> this, um, if you have a look on my uh, uh, on my YouTube channel, you will find that there is, there was some, uh, it was about two years ago now, I made a uh, model of this category L70, uh, a car, from drinking straws and um, and hot glue. Um, it took about three weeks. Um, uh, it was at a friend's house, and I left the model there. Um, uh, but uh, I, what I did was I captured the design in 3D in Pi OpenSCAD at the time. So I have this um, uh, design. So um, these here... <coughs> Uh, that rod in the middle is a one meter yardstick so you can see the scale and there's another one in the middle here which goes from the floor in the middle so it's it's pretty much right it's yes it's right on the level of the floor you can see it the bottom in the center there on that cross there that's the that's the yard that's the one meter stick going to the top here so you can get an idea that this is about from floor to ceiling this is about one point uh, one point oh five uh, 1.05 meters high and um, in the center here another yardstick uh, another meter stick uh, which uh, gives an idea of space of uh, passengers so that was very deliberate to put that in there in the center um, to make sure that there was room for the passengers now <coughs> the original design in, on this was intended so that this entire center section where you can see the blue pipe uh, was an airbox so you'd have one person on the left and one person on the right um, I, for as a three occupancy vehicle I've decided to change that this is from the top So um, instead we have uh, the driver in the center 
uh, like the McLaren F1, and then you have the two passengers left and right. Um, uh, what that what that does is it gives a gives you uh, balance because this is a very light vehicle. Um, I was originally aiming for 120 kilos the entire thing, but this is um, going to be more. It's going to be more like 200 um, with batteries and everything uh, all in. <coughs> Right. So let's go through it. I've left out the doors um, deliberately. I've got the design. Um, uh, I've got the design, but I'm not happy with them. Uh, I'm going to redo those. So um, I've found some various some suppliers of components. As um, they're from Alibaba. And this one here, for example, is zoom to selection. This here is a uh, uh, front front wishbone suspension and uh, and steering. So it's um, uh, double wishbones, and uh, this is from. Uh, Longyang Michael Machinery Co. Limited. So uh, that's a, a fan fantastic. It's designed for EVs. Um, you know, and uh, you know the, the usual sort of you know one one meter, 1.1 meter wide quad bike style thing. Um, and uh, he, uh, in talking with this guy, he very kindly um, arranged. Uh, an, an axle length, so the um, the sort of 1.4 meters uh, from bolt to bolt on the wheels. So let's zoom in on that again. These parts here and here, which attach to the steering here and here, are arranged so that from there to mm, slightly off screen there. Is 1.4 meters. Um, I'm going to have to, when these things arrive, I'm going to have to do some measurements. Um, uh, but I've estimated it for now. Lower, yeah. Didn't mean to do that, but never mind. So um, what I've done here, you can see, I've put in some estimated. Uh, from the drawings, estimated uh, wish, uh, double wishbone front suspension there which gives me enough to, enough to go on <coughs> and the center green box here is a uh, five kilowatt diesel generator I bought uh, one which has a 24 volt DC um, but also from the same supplier, um, I got a 72 volt DC um, uh, 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 kit, DIY kit that you can put in. And whilst the 24 volt has uh, auto start, so it monitors the battery voltage and uh, will automatically um, kick in. On the 72 volt DIY kit, it's got a start and a stop button. You know, we'll just fit those onto the dashboard. You know, it's fine. It's no problem. So um, here, this box <coughs> is for the batteries, and just while these batteries are, uh, I have to say, they are monsters. Um, it's an aviation. <laughs> it's it's a prismatic um, uh, cell capable of delivering 125 amps. It's, I mean, yeah, that's why it's a L173 F125A. They are absolute monsters. They are, uh, the cell dimensions here, um, zoom to selection, uh, 175, uh, 116 between terminals. They're very kindly, the company that's doing this is very kindly, um, uh, um, uh, welding 
uh, some M8 bolts onto these onto the top of these terminals for me. Um, so it's uh, 175 by 174 uh, by 36.4 millimeters. And that, that's a single cell. Um, it's an absolute astonishing amount of uh, power that these things can put out. Um, we can't use 1x650 cells because to get a similar ampage, um, it's going to require 100 kilos worth of cells, whereas, um, <coughs> and not blow the 1x650 cells up. Um, so each one, each cell is two and a half kilos. So times 19 or times 20 is uh, 48 kilos plus the battery mounted BMC system plus the case. You know we're looking at 50 kilos. All right. So that's 50 kilos <coughs> um, for a it's 125 amp hour times what 19 ish. Um, uh, what is that anyway? Um, uh, Python 3, 125 times, uh, working voltage is 2.5 times 19, uh, 6 kilowatts. It's a 6 kilowatt, uh, nominal 60 volt, 60.8, um, uh, which when fully charged would be about said the 72 volts, about, um, which is why. Um, I picked the 72 volt uh, uh, charger. Uh, I didn't want to go higher than that because DC above 24 volts starts to get dangerous. Um, you know, if you start accidentally putting fingers across terminals, you know, 48 volt it starts to make muscles seize up and um, uh, you can't let go which is the whole reason why AC electricity was uh, transmission power lines used. <coughs> so, um, yeah, considerable care needed with this. So why only six kilowatt, uh, uh, six kilowatt hours? Because we've got a diesel generator connected to it. <laughs> All right. Um, this uh, this box here, which is another 50 kilos, <coughs> and that's a five again. That's a five kilowatt um, five kilowatt di uh, diesel generator, and it's connected directly to um, the charge port. So this is the BMS that I'm using has a separate charge port. It is not a, um, a parallel connection between. Um, a generator, uh, a BMS battery, and um, the uh, drivetrain. It's um, it's the diesel generator goes in on a charge port, and what that does is it means that you don't get a um, you don't get the generator attempting to be charged up as a motor, which will be bad. <coughs> So you don't end up with um, attempt uh, current fights between the between the um, between the generator and the charge and the charging from the and the, and the battery. So um, <coughs> we'll have the you, know, you can see the mouse. I've got the mouse right in the center there. The um, steering wheel will come out about here. And <coughs> the rear suspension, I found another fantastic uh, company um, in uh, on, uh, Alibaba called Liang Liu Transmission Machinery Plant. And what he's done is a um, uh, uh, what's it called? Huh. This is a tuk tuk. And initially, it was uh, um, designed for a five kilowatt system. And what he's very, the guy's very kindly done is he's found, he sourced a seven and a half kilowatt motor for me, and a, uh, a seven and a half kilowatt uh, charger. And this was much of this was the original components, and we spent some considerable time in them. This is a really thoughtful guy. 
he spent some considerable time going through the components with me um, so that's the soon to selection this is the seven and a half kilowatt motor and that's the motor controller um, what we did was we identified the various parts from photographs that he sent me the ones that I would like him to send me so for example um, what this is is it's a, it's a swing arm and you can see the actual swing arm here and you can see the wheel hub which is drum brakes there um, what I asked him to also send me was this part here this pipe here these fittings here um, and yes and that that uh, going all the way through and then the opposite side that part there so I will make the frame part and he's going to send me the uh, the, the swing arm and suspension parts etc etc and we've also got uh, uh, on these swing arms you it's uh, it's a not a it, it's McPherson like um, so you've got um, a pair of swing arms with some shock absorbers and the support pieces at the top um, uh, and then what he's also very kindly done is um, from the photographs we've uh, identified the mounting plates for uh, the motor the gearbox the controller etc etc um, uh, 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 so that um, I can um, weld those up that's the only bit that um, uh, will end up needing to be done outside um, uh, 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 you don't want to be welding in your kitchen <laughs> so um, but you know he's going to send me the, all the plates and I will <coughs> I will uh, assemble those but yeah we've got uh, everything everything there uh, tail lights fog lights uh, these headlights these are not um, EU road legal so I'm going to be using them as side lights um, and I've spoken to uh, a company of uh, vintage vintage supplies um, who are very kindly um, uh, they've got some fantastic parts what they did what it was is um, they took over this company took over the Lucas um, factories and um, they continue to manufacture the parts for old cars um, you know from MG's to like really old cars um, yeah, Morgan's and etc uh, etc et and you know, you you real proper British classic cars that um, used um, a whole stack of um, uh, similar parts um, uh, uh, which you know they're very very basic um, and that's what I absolutely love about what these guys do um, yeah because you need something that's you know practical to build that you know uh, you can order off the internet and it arrives and you just bolt it in and put in some wires and put in a switch on the front and you've got headlights duh <laughs> Yeah, um, they even have things. Um, this company, they even have things like door hinges, um, uh, which uh, uh, I think, and you know, uh, locks, um, door locks for your uh, for for passenger and uh, driver doors and and so on. So those will go into this uh, into this vehicle. <coughs> it's um, you know just to complete it. Now. Um, here you can see I've done mock-ups of the swing arm with the uh, with the rear suspension and ooh, let me just move that and take second piece into the middle the, this piston thing is uh, a mock-up for the uh, rear suspension uh, uh, um, uh, spring and uh, and shock then 
uh, inside is uh, part of a, a steel ladder frame, which onto which we will hang the uh, the back axle um, uh, uh, with the CV joints, etc., etc., and the gearbox. It's a direct drive, 6.5 to one uh, 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 gearbox. Um, uh, just a uh, rear, rear axle um, uh, uh, thing. Uh, no actual uh, gears. It's, you know, it's uh, just you know, a fixed one. He said the guy I spoke to. He said he does have a um, high-low gearbox. Um, but, you know, we'll we'll sort that out later. I just I want to get this going. I want it to be dead simple. Um, not have to mess about with gears and etc etc it, it will mean that uh, on a 15% gradient we'll only get 40 mile an hour but uh, that's okay <clears throat> um, and with a 0.33 meter so 33 centimeter uh, 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 radius wheel I think which roughly corresponds to about a 17 inch wheel um, uh, this will do 62 mile an hour. If you drop down to a 14, it will max out at about 52, something like that. So it's going to be dependent on the um, uh, on the uh, thing. But um, one of the important things about this uh, vehicle is it's it's um, very deliberately narrow, 1.4 meters. Um, uh, uh, by only about 1.1 high as far as um, uh, uh, cross-sectional area from the front is concerned and I'm going to use I haven't put in the body panels for things like on the left and for right right wheel they will, I'm going to, will include the usual techniques um, I've been studying cars a lot and seen some fantastic designs this one on car well from Matt from Carl Wow, he did this review of a car, and they have uh, these um, like a diffuser for the front wheel, so you get the air coming in at the front, and it, it's got a, a little sort of internal box pattern thing that um, flattens the air over the uh, over the side of the wheel, um, so um, you don't end up with uh, <coughs> a high drag coefficient. And another little trick I've seen is for uh, mirrors. Uh, you have your mirror, but in front of it, I mean literally in front of it, you have a Venturi. And what happens is that as the air goes through, uh, it speeds up, um, passes over the mirror, and because it's sped up, um, uh, it reduces the uh, it reduces the air pressure, doesn't it? Yeah. So the effect of the negative effect of the drag of the mirror is reduced. So fantastic little idea. So we'll have that. Uh, windscreen is flat, flat glass. So nice and easy. I'm just going to put this up at you. So you can see again, I'm putting it right in the center. And uh, the centre cross thing there. You think you can see that the windscreen is dead flat. A little tricky to get this. There we go. Yeah. All right. And by making it dead flat, um, we can get um, send a DXS file out to uh, a, um, a windscreen manufacturing company that is vintage glass, and they will send me a flat piece of uh, laminated uh, glass suitable for a thing we are with a kite mark and everything on it and we're all good so I haven't actually talked about what this is the construction materials is from but this is in another video but it's worth as a reminder um, these are <coughs> these are um, I've settled on 21.5 millimeter flow past plast <laughs> PVC waste pipe because it doesn't actually matter what these pipes are. 
Uh, what matters is that they are in place to be able to cover them with uh, Hessian style uh, coarse, uh, coarse weave weft Kevlar um, uh, Kevlar cloth, which as I know is used in um, uh, it's used in garments, but it's incredibly strong and light. Um, it's also used in you know, uh, bulletproof vests and stab-proof vests by the police um, and uh, security forces. Um, and um, using a standard fiberglass technique, um, epoxy resin. Um, I'll wrap three layers around each pipe. Um, and I did some test pipes. I was astounded at how light um, and how strong they are. A piece that was 20 centimeters long. I tried bending it with my hand with my hands. It wasn't having any of it. I got about one millimeter of bend out of this 20, 25 centimeter long pipe um, uh, with a lot of pressure. So. Um, uh, that's the other thing, and these the, these um, nodes in the middle that you can see, those uh, fit roughly into a 50 millimeter uh, diameter sphere, and um, I've because I'm a software engineer, um, they, I've designed it part of the uh, calculation of the 3D etc etc. Um, this is using Pi Open SCAD which is a parametric system with it's a Python object orientated wrapper around OpenSCAD. I don't like pissing about with um, with 3D uh, things. Um, uh, uh, I want Git revision control. I want direct control over the over what is um, seen. So as long as I have display, display your OpenSCAD, uh, I'm not interested in the least bit in its features of its console. Edit, uh, where is the... So everything is switched off. Um, where is it? It does actually have... You can actually switch on things like the uh, uh, comments. Uh, not interested in that. Uh, it's got an editor. We're not in the least bit interested in that. Um, you get the uh, get the general. Oh, here we go. Hide toolbars, hide editor, hide console, hide customizer. All right, there's the console. We're not interested in the console. There's the editor. We're not interested in the editor. Uh, there's the toolbars. Not in the slightest bit interested in the toolbars. Um, I know the how they. Mouse, the mouse control to be able to zoom in and out and round, etc., etc., is all that I need. And over here on the right, um, let me let me expand this for the fonts for you on here, so you can get an idea. Uh, whoops, and eight. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. So here you can get an idea of, uh, well, this is the door points and this is the wheel position and then uh, this was the double wishbone suspension function and it's real simple. You create a cube and you translate it and you add it onto the thing and then for the lower wishbone you create a cylinder and you rotate it first by 90 degrees and secondly by 20 degrees and then we have a third rotation for angle of rotation of the wishbone and this is the sort of thing that you just don't get in a 3D CAD program, which is all designed to be lovely and gooey and make you feel happy and safe. And it's all wonderful because you can use the mouse. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any time for that. I want code comments. 
I want para parameters and the best thing to do when you want code comments and parameters and revision control is to use software engineering techniques. It's real simple. So um, uh, here you, know, you could set a different um, angle uh, for the uh, for, for demonstrating you know the, the suspension um, being spring loaded um, at different uh, different uh, weights um, <coughs> and and so on and so the entire thing is constructed like that now um, the technique is uh, f uh, that um, you have a the points first so there's a function and for example the rear bumper points um, which is this section here. Um, they're created in Python lists, All right? So it's a, a 2D or a 3D uh, a, a, a array of, um, of points with comments. So when you want to go to uh, the um, when you want to track down where something is and make a change, you look at the comments here, for example, the top line, uh, which uh, top line should be the, um, the ones that start here and go to here and then, because, you know, that's the top line. <laughs> uh, then the second comment, middle, middle rows, well, that's going to be these ones here, yeah? And then you've got the bottom row, and it says that the bottom row is raised up above the wheel centers to give, to give clearance for the swing arm. So, you know, it, 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 it's something as complex as this um, uh, and as comprehensive um, you need these kinds of, of, of hints, um, uh, 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 and um, uh, you know, it just seems natural and obvious to me that it would, would be done as uh, uh, using, using software engineering techniques. Um, uh, you know, with full sort of uh, parameters uh, 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 for, for everything. So having um, having created the the points, the nodes, the node points, um, it then um, need to uh, uh, connect some pipes between them. So I have uh, a, 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 a class, a Python class called group, and we declare an instance of a group, and we then create uh, uh, the bumper points by calling the our bumper points function, and then start adding pipes. So, um, uh, yes, I know, um, this could be done better. Base bracket zero is um, uh, the, uh, that top line. There we go, base.append. All right, so base starts off as a list, and then base.append, I think. Uh, it, yes, I know uh, that all of this could be done much better if you are, if I was, you know, being kind as a uh, software engineer, I would have, uh, you know, uh, as a programmer, I would have created base equals some object and given uh, it would be base dot top underscore row um, and base dot middle underscore row. So instead of base bracket zero um, uh, to base brackets one bracket zero, um, it would have been, it should have been, you know, um, a much sort of cleaner um, uh, uh, sort of more obvious thing, but you know, I, <laughs> ha ha, nobody else is programming this, so uh, with this, um, nobody else is designing this, so as long as I understand the conventions, I'm fine. Um, uh, uh, should anybody else ever want to um, work with this um, and improve on it and build with it, it's going to be tricky, it's going to have to be. Um, uh, 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 a bit of work to code morph it into something that's 
um, uh, uh, other people could think. And you know, I could have used we could here have used instead of base bracket zero, we could have done a hash define of base underscore top underscore line equals zero and used you know base brackets uh, base underscore top underscore line here. Um, uh, the usual the usual techniques of, of, of not using magic constants in uh, in uh, in code for, for, for clarity but hey yeah it's quick and dirty it works so from these um, the points um, with their with all their locate locations where things like the width and the height are again parameterized based on a grid system I have a um, in a in the uh, util defines there is a list of uh, width points w points as it's called here and some heights h0 h1 h2 h3 h4 uh, you can see h1 um, so there is a 3d grid of uh, points uh, used all the way throughout the entire car um, commonly so that if I wanted to adjust the width of this vehicle it's just you change one parameter um, w points brackets 0 and w points brackets minus 1 and you would have the width would be reduced of the whole vehicle um, if you wanted the floor to be a different, um, the passenger um, occupant uh, floor to be at a different uh, uh, angle, um, you, can, you notice there's a roll on this. Um, it's not it's not dead straight. It bows in the middle. There you can see those yellow things are angling from the side down. It, it you don't you don't um, uh, uh, adjust. Uh, you know, uh, a whole stack of points manually. You don't manually change 60 points. You change one variable. Yeah. All right. Now, um, <clears throat> so the with the with the uh, with the fact that everything is divided down into node points. And pipes between them that gives you enough information to be able to design whoops to be able to um, uh, 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 write uh, with from an algorithm to uh, um, to calculate uh, exactly I'm trying to I'm trying to pin down that one point so you Think. Give me a second. Rotate through 90 degrees. Zoom in a little bit. Rotate through 90 degrees. Position. Rotate through 90. Close enough. Okay, brilliant. So now when we rotate the things, it will rotate around that point. There we go. All right, so um, you can see, for example, this pipe going upwards here leads to that one, but the angle of the, th the thing that it is in is calculated from the position of the node that it joins to. All right, because we know where that node is and we know what pipe connects to it, therefore, we can calculate a uh, the uh, angles in you know x y and z um, uh, which will give us um, the um, uh, uh, a holder onto which that pipe can be glued so it's <laughs> yeah, um, all of these node points are going to have to be 3d printed they don't have to be fantastically strong because it's the Kevlar and the resin that is around these things, these pipes and these nodes, that is going to be the strength, not the actual pipes themselves. The pipes are there because, well, you can't take them out. <laughs> Once they've been wrapped in Kevlar and resin around them, you'll not be able to get them out. Um, 
and that's absolutely fine. Um, <clears throat> now, on this on this frame, which is a geodesic shape, uh, for example, you can see at the, the in the brown back part that's uh, uh, braced everywhere. Every single one of these um, uh, 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 parts is um, uh, is triangularly braced. Um, I wanted to make sure that the um, the behind the passengers, um, you know, behind the occupants, you know, was uh, uh, basically equivalent, you know, a, a, a Kevlar um, reinforced uh, uh, version of a roll cage, um, and inside it. There is going to be this, um, uh, which uh, 25 in the grey, is uh, 50 by 100 three millimeter steel. Um, because I wanted, um, just for sheer paranoia, I want um, the um, there to be a, a metal frame. Uh, it's a lad ladder frame, in effect, going the whole whole length of the vehicle. On, onto which both the front suspension and the rear suspension um, and the um, the drivetrain are uh, connected, not to the actual um, Kevlar um, uh, bodywork itself at all. Um, that the, the the bodywork is therefore um, uh, stiffness to to avoid the um, the steel ladder frame from twisting, just like on the Citroen 2CV. Um, and then um, what we're going to do is to the bodywork panels um, will be made. Oh, you'll love this. They're from um, using the technique from geoboats.com, geodesic airlight boats. Bear in mind, this is a technique that was used in aircraft um, and still can, still can be. Um, and sa sailing boats. Um, it's Dacron sailcloth covering a lattice work, a wooden uh, lattice work, where the Dacron is then stretched. Now, um, what I decided instead to do um, was uh, I found some DIY um, hobbycraft uh, 12 inch long bamboo. Uh, which is so it's 30 centimeters by nine millimeters by one millimeters and you can stack them up um, with hot glue in a lattice framework and what's really nice is that the bamboo is thin enough to be able to um, uh, bend and you can get a compound curve um, in, in, in two, two dimensions with absolutely no difficulties whatsoever. Um, so it'll be four layers, um, so one in X and then 90 degrees, one in Y, and then uh, another layer on top on X, and then another layer on top for Y, um, to which one sheet of the Dacron is then hot glued at the, um, at the, um, uh, 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 on, on the, on the top, on the, in the direction of the curve so that it stretches taut um, and then um, a second piece loosely glued on the underside which is um, uh, then using one of those label guns the the barbs with the plastic barbs you know the ones you go to a shop and you buy some clothes and uh, it's got a price tag on it and if you look very closely, the price tag is attached to the clothes with a plastic barb with um, a, like a, a, a T piece at each end. And there's, it, there's, um, uh, it's a, it, there's something called a barb gum, which is on a needle, which, which you can poke through a garment or whatever it is and push the one barb through and the label on the other thing. And you've got your, um, your label attached. Well, what I figured was... I can use those barbs, put in hundreds of those barbs at regular intervals, um, and found some 12 millimeter barbs on Amazon, uh, quantity 5,000, 
um, which I can just go thing all over this um, two layers of polyester and the two pieces of polyester will be 12 millimeters apart at any one time. Well then all you have to do is um, uh, fill it with um, uh, fire resistant construction foam. <laughs> <laughs> so I found, um, again on Amazon, something called Sudal, S-O-U-D-A-L, uh, which is uh, fire-resistant uh, expanding foam, and got a expanding foam gun, which I'm going to shove down the middle and fill up these panels. Um, and as I, as I showed in the other video, the test panel I made is remarkably light. I mean, it, it it's, it's incredibly low cost. Um, uh, 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 it's as um, strong as um, carbon fiber, but you know a fraction of the price. Um, uh, and you end up with something that is, you know, uh, 12 to 15 millimeters uh, in uh, thickness, uh, which um, uh, is as rigid as anything. But uh, you know, in the important x and y directions. Um, especially if you're making compound curves, it's um, it and, and then um, uh, attach it to the frame at strategic points. Um, uh, it ain't going anywhere, and the because the one thing about these pipes is that in the middle there's no support, so they will bounce around. Um, and um, by attaching panels to uh, the the pipes. The pipes stiffen up. They don't. They can't move. You know, you attach a, uh, a, a you know a clip. Um, the panel uh, will be um, uh, attached to that. So you get you get the best of both worlds. The panels um, they can twist about. Um, if you hold one edge and then twist and then hold the other edge, you can twist it about. Well, all you need to do is to attach the, those edges to the pipes. Um, and they ain't twisting about no more because the joints, the nodes, ain't moving, and um, uh, the, the you know the node points on the things are, will, will not be moving about. Um, and um, uh, and then you attach the pipes uh, to the edges of the edges of the panels, and the pipes ain't moving about either. So it's um, uh, a, a hybrid combination of, uh, of, of the best structural uh, engineering strength of the different materials um, to stiffen up the entire thing. So then it just becomes a matter of making sure that it is actually properly attached. <coughs> At home, cough, cough. Um, the geodesic aerolite boats makes this as a, as a monocoque. Um, I want this to be disassemblable, uh, assemblable, so that we can do sections. So, for example, here the first section that I intend to make on the kitchen floor uh, will be the green bonnet, followed by attaching the orange uh, front pieces, and that will be 1.4 meters. Um, so you know, uh, basically coming up to my chest in height, um, uh, 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 when it's turned up uh, that way, um, and it will be only uh, looking at that the, the the meter pipe. It will only coming up to the bonnet to this point here. Yeah. Uh, will be about 80 centimeters, 75. That's yeah, about 75 centimeters. I should actually know that because I should know exactly where that comes up to. It should be actually 0 0.77, 0 0.77 meters. <laughs> All right. Um, and that distance again by the judgment of the the the, the width, so the you know um, the depth, one meter. The bonnet is about 1.2 meters, 1.2 meters uh, uh, deep. Um, and then 
once that's once that's made, I will uh, drill through the um, through the nodes, put in bolts, make sure they're all put in, all put in, put some steel pieces, some steel plates that um, uh, that then the um, steel frame can attach to, and the uh, suspension wishbone suspension at the front will be attached to the steel, not to the um, not to the uh, not to the um, the Kevlar reinforced pipes. That's very deliberate. So um, the steel was going to have to be steel frame is going to have to be attached at multiple points to the um, uh, to the, uh, uh, the the Kevlar geodesic frame. Um, to, in order to distribute the the load, um, it's quite similar to the technique that's used in the Lamborghini Huracan, where they've got a um, a structural cell in the middle, and you've got the subframes. And um, if you look, uh, there's uh, daily daily driven exotics. They they have a, um, a Huracan which um, needed some repair, and they show that. Um, or was it the was it the 720? Got trashed. Got really badly trashed. Somebody smashed into it. And um, uh, they showed that there was a subframe of carbon fiber connecting to a, a passenger uh, monocoque. And it was connected at the top. It was connected about eight to 10 points just at the top alone with these distributed um, uh, things. And it's to, it's to make sure that the load is distributed from the uh, from from the things, but that the in a, in an accident the um, the the subframe pipes will collapse, um, but the um, giving you um, uh, uh, safety um, uh, a thing you don't want the entire thing to be rigid. Uh, a thing. Um, then the the second part I still haven't uh, quite decided whether. The pink, which is the dashboard, um, will be attached to the bonnet, or whether that will be separate. Um, I may make the floor piece completely separate from the roof piece um, uh, there, um, uh, uh, and the rear, and then um, have the rear section so what it what I might it might do is a um, uh, so the, the the brown the brown and the green and the light red are definitely going to be um, uh, one one piece that's what the um, the rear suspension will be and the the drivetrain will be um, connected into. Um, I'd like really ideally to make three or four parts here. Um, I probably end up hmm. it does look like the blue, the purple, the pink and the yellow could be a third part, doesn't it? Um, and then we'll just have bolts on every single one of the uh, pieces. So this, actually what will ha end up happening is that, say for example, this pipe here, this pink one, will be doubled up or no. This green one here will be doubled up. So um, uh, I'll, I'll make this green and uh, and this orange here. Can you see? So what will end up likely end up happening is that there will be two of these next to each other that can be attached by bolts driven through modified versions of these 
So a we'll cut off on one set will cut off on the left side and one set another set will cut off on the right and have um, uh, the, the pipes um, will <coughs> the pipes will um, uh, 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 um, be formed you know, uh, parallel to each other. Uh, doubled up pipes parallel to each other. I've just noticed this piece. Can you see those are overlapping? I will need to correct that. So this this pink pipe should be coming out from the middle here. It shouldn't be joining in with this one. That's uh, yeah yeah. I'm gonna go and fix that. I'll fix that later. That's interesting. That's the first time I've seen that. You have no idea how many times I've been staring at this thing. <laughs> and ugh. those ones are joined together as well. Yuck. Uh, I'm going to have to fix those. That's all right. That's uh, not a problem. You can't have two pipes attempting to fill on the same space, can you? Otherwise, what you have to do, as you can see, you'd have to um, cut the cut shave the edge off those pipes. I mean, I could do it that way, but it's well, yeah, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to fix that so that like, this one comes out at a 45 degree angle here, and that will go in there nicely, and the same down the bottom there as well. This one, you can see, that's joined onto the two there. And it should be the second one, this one going up here, should come in at this point here at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. It's easily done. Anyway, um, that's the that's the basics. Um, you know, this has gone from what used to be uh, a two person. Uh, occupant vehicle, occupancy vehicle to a three, um, sacrificing the airbox concept, which was supposed to be the entire center center of the vehicle was supposed to be air, to in order to reduce uh, the drag coefficient, you know, the front surface area. Basically, it was like a, it was supposed to be like a uh, catamaran canoe, one person on the left and one person on the right, and then air right down the middle. But um, a few tweaks, a few tweaks turned it into a three occupants with a central driving position like the McLaren F1. But, um, the idea is to get the drag coefficient way down, which is why it's such a low riding, low riding vehicle like a sports car. In fact, I'm really looking forward to the version of this, which has something like a 1000cc BMW or Kawasaki motorcycle engine, 200 horsepower, and a vehicle weight of, you know, hmm. um, <laughs> about 150 kilos. <laughs> Vehicle, vehicle weight of 150 kilos with a 200 and 240 horsepower <laughs> bike engine with a mad turbo or supercharger on it. You'd be looking at somewhere around the uh, thousand horsepower per ton or above. <laughs> and uh, for this one, we're going for. Um, for lightweight, so with three occupants, it will be about 400, 450 kilos, and a 7.5 kilowatt is about the 10 horsepower mark. So you do the math. This is uh, this is the whole idea is that this is going to be you know, 150, 150 miles per gallon or greater. I'm hoping for a lot more, but. Uh, uh, with the steel frame, that's unlikely, unfortunately, to get really, really high. Um, uh, but just, just because uh, the, 
it's, you know, the steel frame alone is uh, 50 kilos in weight. So you've got 50 kilos for the diesel uh, diesel uh, generator, 50 kilos for the batteries, about 50 kilos for the steel frame, uh, about another 50 to 75 kilos for the swing arms and suspension at the front and front and rear and the electric motor. So and about uh, 30 kilos for the Kevlar and the uh, panels. So looking at uh, one, two, three, four, uh, we're looking at about 250 kilos all in, uh, which is still well within category L70. Category L70 maximum unladen weight is 350. You cannot exceed that unless you are doing it as a, um, a commercial vehicle, a delivery, commercial delivery vehicle. Then you can, then I think you can go. I think it's up to 400, something like that, and you can go up to 600 kilos in, 650 or something, in uh, uh, goods. But uh, this is a passenger one, so it has to be. Uh, it's a different, um, uh, you know, different limits. Uh, interestingly, on uh, category L70, there's low speed limit. <laughs> So if you can arrange the uh, uh, rolling resistance to be low by using uh, eco eco tires, you know, A-class eco tires, um, a lot of companies are doing uh, 14, 13, 14, and 15 inch eco tires now that are classified as A. Um, they and but those, that's an A for normally used for say for example a 1,250 kilo super mini whereas this is going to be an A for something that's literally five times lighter in weight or three times lighter with the passengers in it um, so I expect the rolling resistance to be absolutely minimal um, the wear on those on these types of eco tires can be quite high because they're uh, typically hard compounds, but if you've got less weight, then there is less wear. So that's better for the environment because you don't end up shoving a whole stack of particles of uh, bits of uh, toxic rubber here into the side of the roads. Which is something that uh, a lot of people forget about with the brake pads from vehicles and the rubber coming off of them is unbelievably toxic poisons the environment anybody who's lives by the side of a motorway or a especially an a road is taking their life in their hands not a good idea it's not the fumes from the diesel and the petrol that's particularly going to get you it's the toxic particles from the disc brakes and the uh, and the uh, rubber from the tires the rubbers and the compounds from the tires it's going to get you so reducing that is kind of important um, rolling resistance by using techniques from uh, uh, designed on sports cars and high performance uh, vehicles to get the drag coefficient down um, the panels, the body panels, um, are deliberately, um, when you put in the construction foam, it bulges up in places, which leaves a dimpled effect where the, um, where the barb tags pull down. And what that means is that you have a whole stack of dimples across right way across the body panel, which creates um, a turbulence effects across the entire surface, and you get a boundary layer, just like on a golf ball. And if you've ever seen the Mythbusters episode on that, it's a something mad like a 10, 10 to 12 percent reduction in fuel economy. So, uh, 10 percent increase in fuel economy. So, sorry, I think they were doing, they did like 24 miles a gallon with just the clay on, and then cut out the dimples and got 29 miles a gallon. I mean, it was astonishing. 
so um, yeah it, it, these things matter so the having a bumpy looking of effect on the uh, panels is not a uh, a, a, a minus for style it's plus for kudos for for um, uh, 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 increasing fuel economy and, uh, and blah 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 I leave that with you um, I just say you know the whole motivation for this thing is because I'm really pissed off with um, how vehicles uh, are being designed at the moment um, they're being designed um, uh, to you know taking the steel or aluminium frame um, uh, and expecting you know to in an incremental fashion to chuck in some electric motors and call it oh it's really efficient and it saves the environment it god damn well doesn't the um, size of the batteries has to be enormous you've got so much weight you have to have enough electricity running through your car to be able to power 20 homes the teslas at the moment they can deliver one megawatt of electricity that is enough to power it, it's it's something like 40 homes you know um, absolute total madness and these things are dangerous there's warning videos in truckers magazines but if you've come across an electric vehicle that has been damaged under no circumstances should you touch it because there is a possibility that the batteries or the motor controller have shorted out to the frame directly to the metal frame with anything up to a thousand volts which as the the the, the truck driver who's you know the recovery truck guy goes to touch the frame or touch his own vehicle after it's been attached to this ultra dangerous bomb it's instant death for him you have to get a robotic arm completely um, uh, 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 isolated and the guy the, the, the recovery vehicle, uh, driver has to operate the robo robotic arm to get the vehicle onto the uh, the flatbed trailer in an isolated fashion without touching it operating the robotic arm by remote from a distance of 25 to 75 meters away in case it catches a, a electrocute somebody B catches fire so yeah there is a lot to answer for in these vehicles with materials use of materials rare earth materials we don't have enough on the planet to be able to supply everybody with enough with this with an electric everybody can you everybody can't have an electric vehicle because there's not enough lithium neodymium copper or cobalt on the planet to make everybody a electric vehicle and there's not enough infrastructure to supply these vehicles it won't work you've got to get the weight down you've got to be practical use uh, the same technique that's used on uh, diesel electric trains which is you, you charge up the battery whilst you are driving from a highly efficient um, uh, single of single rpm um, uh, uh, you know, any, you know, tuned um, uh, 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 generator which always operates within its most efficient power power and, uh, and energy band you switch it on and off yeah um, and uh, when I, when I 
get to doing you know, like the proper version of putting gears. You, see, you use gears, electric motors are not efficient. When you are in stall torque, they are 15.15% efficient. 1.5, that's 85%. When below about 500 RPM, an electric motor wastes 85% of its power in heat. Electric motors are efficient in the middle of their band. They have different efficiencies from diesel and um, uh, 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 petrol engines. They do not have better efficiencies. These are the facts which have been conveniently forgotten and ignored. Yes, the design of electric vehicles is simpler, there is less to maintain. But when you are done with that battery, it goes into storage in the desperate hope that at some point in the future, somebody is going to work out how to recycle it. And there is a serious problem in China at the moment. The batteries are not being designed for recycle. They're being sealed because they're dangerous. So the less lithium you can put in it, the less copper, the less neodymium, and the less cobalt you can use, the better off things are going to be for the planet. And that means getting the weight and the size down of your vehicles, not two and a half thousand kilos, two and a half tons. If you've bought those vehicles, you are stupid. You've done more damage to the environment than any one and a half ton diesel car ever could. Please get with the program. Do the math, do the calculations, do the science. Back these types of vehicles. These lightweight category L7 E vehicles. And if you're in the US, that's an NEV, neighborhood electric vehicle. Right, this is what it's all about. So, thank you very much.